It is day 25. Gosh, we've come a long way of the Bride Chiller 30 Days of Wedding Planning. I'm Alicia. I host Bride Chiller and uh, the Bride Chiller podcast, that is. And I've been sharing all of my best wedding planning tips and ways to just ease into the land of chiller, which I'm sure most of you want to be a part of. Not being stressed and feeling obligated to do things and feeling just crazy strung out when it comes to wedding planning because that's not what it's all about. So today I want to talk about the art of delegation. This is finding uh, ways to give people in your life, whether they are wedding vendors, professionals, finding people online or your family and friends, tasks and jobs to help you out. I think a lot of people, if you're, especially if you're like me, I am a very um, busy ambitious person who thinks I can do everything and will sometimes not realize how much of my valuable time I am taking up and wasting doing small stupid tasks that I could easily delegate by either hiring someone on TaskRabbit or Upwork or asking for family and friends to help me out. I think a lot of us feel like asking for help is a bit of a weakness and I totally can relate to that, especially when it comes to something so personal like planning your wedding. And it's very hard in, in the current day, especially if we're talking from a female perspective, that you're working really hard, you start planning a wedding and you expect it to be really fun. And sometimes it's not. I've got a whole other video that I'm going to share with you called It's Okay to Feel Like Shit. And I can't wait to talk more about that because I think we are definitely driven towards this perspective that you've got to be having fun all the time. Not true. You want to maybe exercise and still keep some sort of social life. And as things ramp up and you realize, especially if you're doing a lot of the planning on your own, perhaps you're not hiring a planner or a coordinator, or maybe you are hiring a coordinator, but part of the deal is that you do a lot of the planning and they put it all together. It can really sort of start to become a bit overwhelming if you're not organized and also if you don't divide the tasks that can be delegated, outsourced. When I talk about outsourcing, I run this business, Bride Chiller, as my side hustle. I still work a full-time job and for a lot of the time I sit at home on my laptop and I do all my stuff and I record the podcast and I do things like this, great projects. I write freaking books you know, I wrote these books before and after work and on the weekends. This is not a sob story. This is just going, I worked really hard, but I wanted to get it done. But also looking at the books and looking at business, there were aspects of the books, like some of the design. Um, my husband, Rich, is a really great graphic designer, but we went, can we really typeset two books? And to be honest, it was great because we hired a professional designer and she did all that and we still had input, but it allowed us to let go, coming back to this point, letting go of some of the tasks that, yeah, we could have learned how to typeset, but it would have taken a bunch of time. Why not just pay someone with the skills that could get it done in a quarter of the time and do it correctly? Send it back to us. That's done. We can use our time elsewhere. So bringing that back to what you're doing right now, and that's hopefully planning a wedding or at least thinking about planning a wedding. I think it's a really good exercise to sit down and look at your to-do list and think, what are the tasks on this list that I could either pay someone else to do? And this is not big money. I'm talking like TaskRabbit, it's like 20 bucks an hour and you can get someone to stuff envelopes. Or you can hire someone to organize your guest list spreadsheet. Maybe you hate Excel, but if someone sets it up for you, you can make it work. There are so many small annoying tasks that will take potentially you an age to do that you could just offset and give to someone else. I've also talked about frienders and vendors and working with frienders and I think if you've missed that episode go back and, and watch it. Let me just check what number it is on my list. It's day 15 using your friends as vendors so watch that episode. I go really in deep about, I keep saying in deep, I really go in depth about working with friends. However, there might be girlfriends or boyfriends that you could have a wine night or a cocktail night and get them to come around to your home and help you stuff envelopes or help you stick something together or, or help you build an 
arch or whatever whatever the task is. So I think it's just about being able to look at the list, allocate, realize what is going to take up your valuable, precious time. And do remember that your time is money. I look at my time now as billable hours to myself. I look at tasks that I can literally go on on a website like Upwork, which is fantastic if you want graphic design or you want someone to do some building a wedding website if you're not using a pre-made website. You can outsource that stuff and just get rid of it. And now I look at my time with billable hours and go, you know what, my time is worth more than 30 bucks an hour to pay someone else to do something for my business. And you should think that way too. There are certainly tasks that are fantastic to do yourself and you feel really buzzed that you've, you've DIY'd something or you can tick something else off the list. But for everything else that doesn't really make you feel excited about participating in it, give it to someone else, hire someone else, or at least consider a, a coordinator, like I said way back in what episode four or five, to say, these are the tasks that I don't really feel great about doing myself, whether that's because you don't have the skills, you haven't got the interest, all the time and shift them on to someone else. Trust me, this will be empowering and it's just also a great philosophy and mindset to get in for the rest of your life because time is short, life is short to have to do shitty tasks. Not to say you have to pass on all your shitty tasks to someone else, but someone else will enjoy it and will appreciate the work and money and time. And you've got friends. If they're generous and lovely, feed them, give them wine, and get them working. There it is. Excited to be sharing this with you and uh, I hope you're enjoying these videos. I'd love for you to comment below and tell me what tasks you've either put in the fuck it bucket or you have outsourced. Where did you find them? Maybe you've gone to Etsy instead of designing your own stuff. I like to call it DIY without the why. Do it yourself without yourself. Outsource the why. Buy something fantastic from Etsy. You don't have to buy a glue gun. Day 26. Tomorrow in the 30 days of wedding planning is a great conversation that is happens that is happens. It's a great conversation that happens in the bride chiller community and that is on looking at feminism and can you be a feminist and plan a traditional wedding or be a feminist and get married? It's a big conversation, it's a fun conversation. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna tell you the answer now. Yes, you can, you absolutely can. But still come back and watch the episode. I'm so delighted that you are sharing the time and taking the time to watch me, to be a part of this community and get involved. If this is a new experience for you, you're like, who is this Australian woman and why is she talking to me? Well, then I'm encouraging you to head to iTunes, Spotify, Android, uh, wherever you choose to find your podcasts and search for Bride Chiller. I host the wedding planning podcast. Probably, I don't want to go like the most popular, but it's been around for a long time. 300 episodes, over 300 episodes I'm around now. So uh, I've talked about a lot of different shit. Well, there you go. Until tomorrow, thank you so much for watching and happy days.